It's One Punch Man Road to Hero. So what is being categorized as an RPG is kind of a combination of a few different things. You've got your turn-based strategy RPG and kind of a card game, but not really a card game, but a card game. Now a lot of licensed properties just go with the straight card game and it's not great. This actually manages to capture something fairly different in that in every respect, it really is a lot like a turn-based strategy RPG with the addition of cards. And that's actually vaguely unique. On top of that, it includes a lot of fan favorites. You get to collect heroes, those types of dynamics, but it manages again to keep the depth of a turn-based strategy. I would say that if you're a fan of either of those genres and especially a fan of One Punch Man, this is something you've got to try because it's different enough to where I'm kind of leaning towards it as an actual regular game I may play. And considering it's a licensed game, that's actually really impressive. It's got great graphics, the sound is great, and it really does One Punch Man as it should. It's of course out on both iOS and Android right now. Moving on to number nine, Detention is an adventure game with an incredibly stylistic approach that I'm gonna just go ahead and say like I absolutely adore. It's a horror game that uses atmosphere and visuals and incorporates Taoism and Buddhism influences in order to tell a story about 1960s Taiwan under martial law. Now here's the thing, it will remind you of Silent Hill in my opinion. Of course, not in setting necessarily, but in a lot of weird aesthetic choices that it makes, keeping in mind that it is a point and click horror game. Now I haven't beaten it, so I can't tell you how it ends, but what I have played really puts this game in kind of a league of its own. Red Candle Games originally published this on Steam back in January of 2017. I didn't see it then. This is really my introduction to it and I'm really impressed with it. Detention is a game that has so many different influences, goes off in so many different directions, but really manages to build itself a coherent identity. And honestly, it's amazing. What I've done so far is just unlike anything else I've played, with the caveat that it's point and click and therefore instantly familiar in that respect. Moving on to number eight, it's Fist of the North Star. And this game categorizes itself as action. However, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's not a straightforward action game. So take a moment to understand it. It's basically a turn-based battler. However, timing is basically how the action element comes in. It's kind of got a bit of a gesture oriented quick time event thing. I mean, it's not gonna blow your mind once you actually see it in action, but it works which is more than you can say for a lot of quick time event stuff. If you're familiar with the manga, that's the story you're playing through. It is a gacha game, so understand that going in, and I think you'll be able to sort of set your expectations accordingly. It's a good example of a gacha game, and for the people who are able to sort of resist the monetary elements of gacha games, it's actually pretty fun. However, if that's not your thing, if gotcha just immediately ruins a game for you, then there you go. You know exactly what you're getting into. Moving on to number seven, it's Second Galaxy, a strategy game that gives you really big thousand player galactic battles and manages to combine a few different types of experience into one thing that I think as far as mobile, there's not really a lot else like this. Like I said, at its core, I would probably call it a strategy game, but it combines other elements like open world, a lot of elements from 4X style games. In some respects, you could even call it a simulation, but I would more or less say the bulk of what you're gonna care about is the strategy elements of this game. And again, the thousand player battles. And I say that primarily because they're done really well and they work in a manner that keep your attention and never really feel confusing or strange. Like you have your MMORPG elements. I mean, in some respects, you could say it's similar to EVE Online, but I would say it's a little bit more in the area of battle oriented and being it's that kind of a game, it really ultimately matters how it grows and what it turns into over time. I think there's a lot here to like and Second Galaxy is out on iOS and Android. Definitely worth a go. Moving on to number six, 99 Dead Pirates is a very different take on kind of just a simple battler. Now it's got these pretty very stylistic graphics that aren't terribly taxing. They're pretty detailed, but not overly detailed. And they keep your eyes on the action at all time. You basically progress and use the game's fairly unique combat system that I think will remind you of a sort of a Bloodborne, but obviously with very simple dynamics. It's a lot about dodging and timing. So that's the kind of stuff you really need to keep into account while you're playing this game. Depending on what you're looking for in a game, this may be great. In my opinion, as far as like 
something you can play in bursts and kind of go on forever with, that's exactly the kind of game I would call this. The gameplay is really satisfying, if a little bit grindy. I don't know that I would sit down and play it for an extended period of time, but like I said, in bursts, it's really good. Like, the combat is great for a mobile game, and there's plenty of fun to be had. 99 Dead Pirates is out on Android now. Moving on to number five is Penguin Isle, which I'm going to categorize as kind of a virtual pet game, but not really. Basically, what you're doing is creating environments for penguins to do stuff in and quote unquote collecting penguins. Now, I do think that you might get a little bit attached to them in a way where collect sounds weird, but it's more or less what you're doing. You're getting more penguins to live and give them stuff to do. And honestly, it's really pretty. It's got a really good art style. And it manages to stay interesting without breaking the sort of relaxing tone. Like, the music and sound effects and everything about it really are conducive to a kind of calming experience that I probably wouldn't characterize as, like, exciting. However, I would characterize as enjoyable. Like, there's not really any tension built at any point, and that's fine. This is the type of game that doesn't need that, because it gives you exactly what you would expect with great visual framework and a lot of enjoyable moments that I think less cynical people would like. If you're a cynic, I would stay away from this one though. Penguin Isle is out on iOS and Android now. Moving on to four, Ooh La La Idle Adventure is exactly what it says on Idle Adventure, but it brings in role-playing elements and social elements that kind of make it a unique beast. It's set in the Stone Age and it's not exactly what you would expect on any front in that it has a lot of like straight RPG elements, but is sort of all pulled together by what you would expect out of an idler. It's a kind of genre mixing that I think is interesting because I would definitely not go, I need an RPG that's an idler. Yet I would comfortably call it both of those things without being dismissive towards either of them. I mean, it's not going to be the most deep RPG you've ever played, but it treats its RPG elements with reverence and doesn't skimp on them, so I actually really like those elements of it. Moving on to number three, it's Series M, which is a strategic RPG that brings in those same gotcha elements that we've sort of talked about a lot at this point, and its look isn't 100% unique. Now, that being said, this is a game that manages to create a really involving battle system that is entirely the reason to play it. It's not going to shock you with something totally new, but it's a really well-made game. And in a lot of respects, I think that it stands out in a genre just more or less because it makes a few choices that really prioritize quality, not just in its presentation, its story, but also in the way that it actually plays out, mechanically speaking. It's also, well, maybe not the most unique visually, really well done. Its cinematic mode is very cool looking and it gives you all of the JRPG payoff moments that you expect in a game with a cool battle system. It has a different aesthetic, but it had me hearkening back to the PlayStation Final Fantasy games at times. Not necessarily in exactly how it works, but how it looks, the way it handles visuals, and it does have things like PvP, raids, etc, etc. Series M isn't going to blow your mind with originality, but it is probably a better made game than most of its genre, and for that reason I would say it's definitely worthwhile to play on iOS and Android now. Coming in at number two is Call of Duty Mobile. Now, Call of Duty Mobile is live. It's got five maps from previous games. It's actually pretty good, but it comes with a major disclaimer in that there are a lot of in-app purchases. This definitely isn't the only game we're saying this about this month, but like there's a pretty good game here that is way over monetized. There's a fair amount of modes. For instance, there's Team Deathmatch, there's Frontline, Practice versus AI, Domination, Search and Destroy. I mean, you get a lot of really great Call of Duty action, and it's executed really well considering it's a mobile game. But it is also a mobile game, and it's basically impossible not to talk about how many microtransactions there are. There's literally one for $20 on a skin. Just a color bursty gun skin. Like, here's the thing. I would recommend playing this game, but as I will probably be doing more and more as time passes, I just have to flag games that have got excessive microtransactions. It doesn't stop them from playing well, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't mention it. I still think Call of Duty Mobile is worth your time. It definitely does exactly what you expect it to do, and it does it well, but keep in mind the excessive monetization. 
Finally, number one is Mario Kart Tour. I want to stress that just the gameplay of this is incredibly fun. It's great. It is a really well-made mobile adaption that manages to feel a lot like Mario Kart without having nearly as much going on as far as the controls go. However, it must be said that the microtransactions are, poof, there's a lot of them. Nintendo, I don't think, found the right balance here, and giving you a daily cap for leveling stuff is really kind of eh. So are the quote-unquote surprise boxes, which we've never called loot boxes in the past, and they're definitely not that or anything. Uh-uh, no sir, not loot boxes, they're loot boxes. And I want to stress that all that stuff annoys me, but I still do like the gameplay. I feel like if they could loosen up a little bit on their monetization on this game, they've got something that's pretty good. We'll see if they take that kind of criticism on board. I've seen a lot of people complain about this game, and honestly, I'm pretty with the complaints because pretty much all of them are oriented towards the monetization, and almost none of them are oriented towards the gameplay. I would say give it a shot. It's free, of course. Mario Kart Tour is great, if not over-monetized. It's out on iOS and Android now. Quick bonus game for you. This is The Police 2, is a sequel to the story-driven noir experience, and sets itself more in a small town, cold climate story, which is really cool because the original was very big city oriented. I haven't gotten super far into it, but it retains all of the charm of the original, and I'm really enjoying it. It's out on iOS and Android now. Give it a shot. Which games did you play this month? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.